let's get to the tasks. We already saw uh, what a task is. It is a C function. The C function uh, has got some initialization code and then it runs in a never ending loop. Uh, you can see the prototype of the task. It's a void task because it never returns. It doesn't have any place where to return. And it gets a uh, argument that's a void constant pointer. So you can pass any pointer to anything. Typically it's uh, an initialization value. Uh, it can be a number typecasted to a void pointer or it can be a pointer to a structure. Very often it's null. But uh, if you, for example, instantiate several tasks uh, using the same function, this typically gives them an idea uh, which task it is. So it can be a different TCP IP port. It can be the number of the task if it matters for debugging purposes or for communication purposes. So the argument is the initial argument uh, that's called when you create the task. And uh, when it's executed, it gets passed as an argument. Each task has uh, its own stack, priority, state where it can reside. And uh, it is created by a function OS thread create. And it's uh, deleted if you call OS thread delete, which means uh, if you have a task for one purpose, you can uh, instantiate it, it gets executed and it can delete itself. When all the initialization is finished, why should I keep it in the memory and in the lists? I just remove it and uh, it's never scheduled again. Task consists of a couple of elements. The first one is the program code. When you create a task, you put a name of the function of the task into the, its definition. So it's a pointer where the scheduler should jump when it uh, starts this task and it calls the code of the task, the routine, and that's why we need it in a memory. Then it contains the stack where it uh, holds its local variables. And it has got the TCB where FreeRTOS stores the data, the context and the state of this task. A very interesting thing, the TCB, you don't get a pointer to it. What do you get pointer to is the top of the stack. So if you want to see the TCB, you have to take this pointer, the original pointer and decrement it by size of the TCB because the TCB is below. Uh, when you create a, a task, uh, PV port malloc is uh, called and it creates in the FreeRTOS heap, the space for the stack and for the TCB. So the first uh, creates the TCB, second uh, allocates the task stack and uh, both values are saved in the TCB itself. When you do a switch from one task to the other, it's called context switching and effectively the context, the registers are stored in the TCB and the new task restores the registers from its own TCB and then it's switched. And here you can see an example of a task function. So we define it as a void function because we don't expect any return. A name of the task with a prototype for the argument. Then we can uh, run an initialization code. For example, if uh, this one is uh, responsible for uh, speaking to the Bluetooth low energy coprocessor, we can instantiate and initialize the UART then in the loop, we can care about the communication with the BLE. And uh, we should never get after the while one loop because uh, we don't have anywhere to return. So such block should not return anywhere. If you want to stop this task, you can suspend it or you can delete it, but never exit the function. We can see the uh, state machine uh, how the tasks can uh, operate. So when they are created, they are created in a ready state. And uh, when uh, the scheduler decides to execute it, it uh, gets to the running state. 
and uh, from running it can get again into the ready by yielding and it can get as well to the blocked state by waiting for some resource or for a timeout and it can be as well suspended and effectively it can be suspended from any of the other tasks when it gets resumed uh, it gets back to the ready state by os thread resume you can as well suspend all tasks if you want and you can resume them by an interrupt the thread state can be uh, obtained by cmc's function to get the state of the thread and you can see that all can be decoded the task priorities are defined as a number from zero to the max priorities minus one and uh, the execution of the each task is dependent on the priority remember that the number of priorities as well defines the number of the lists in the ready state so the more priorities you define the more memory it will request which means limit the number of priorities only to the needed ones the priority can be changed in runtime so if you know that a task uh, that is normally dormant uh, will be needed in uh, the near future you can boost its priority temporarily and when the job is finished you can reduce it again so playing with priorities is a good trick how to increase temporarily importance of some communication or some process and then you can again reduce the priority or you can put the task in a suspend there exists some system defined priorities you can see them like uh, starting with the idle priority with a value minus three then we have got uh, low below normal and normal priorities up to zero and we can as well increase the priorities uh, up to the real time with a value three then of course you can uh, define your own set of priorities there is as well a special value os priority error on this slide you can see how the two different strategies uh, cooperate among the tasks so when the task switch occurs when uh, the state of the tasks change and you can see that uh, with the preemptive mode there is much more task switches so it takes uh, a little bit more cpu resources you should remember that uh, the tasks are organized in the lists the list uh, can be or definition can be obtained in this header file you can see what is uh, implemented inside each list so there is a, a test value to validate whether the list is uh, not overwritten uh, we have got a, a priority we have got a pointer to the sequential items we have got a mini list item and uh, again an integrity value to test whether the list is fine and wasn't overwritten when we speak about uh, the context switching we can see step by step what happens when we get a source for the context switching uh, from the systic first we get a systic uh, interrupt that causes the execution of uh, export systic handler this is implemented in port c and uh, it's normally written in assembly to be effective and it depends on the architecture so for cortex m0 uh, it will be different from cortex m3 or m4 uh, this uh, interrupt handler will first disable all interrupts this is uh, to block any other uh, system functions to interfere or interrupts to call any system functions then it activates the pendable sv bit so that at the end uh, we will execute the context switch when the systic handler is finished when uh, the context switch will happen after we enable the interrupts again at the end of the function uh, the pend sv will call the task switch context and uh, this will call the macro select the highest priority task which goes through all the uh, listed ready in, uh, tasks and chooses the one with the highest priority put at the beginning of uh, a given list then when it is executed it's put at the end of the list so it always rotates so 
when the cystic handler enables the interrupts again, the pendable SV is executed physically and the task switch occurs. So switching time uh, depends on uh, the interrupt latency and uh, on uh, Cortex-M is somehow fixed. So there were some test conditions like uh, it was compiled by Kyle for Cortex-M3. The stack overflow checking was turned off to show just the pure context switching. The compiler optimization was set for the speed. And uh, there was as well a macro port optimized task selection enabled. So with uh, these uh, compilation setups, the task switch was measured and uh, it was uh, as well measured using the Cortex M4 and M7 that guarantees that the floating point registers are stored in the TCB and restored. So for measuring such time, we used the GPIO pins. So there are uh, GPIO outputs and event output. And uh, we used uh, these pins as output and uh, could see that uh, when uh, the PB6, okay, or to reset and set the PB6, we could use uh, these functions. If we want to see a pure glitch, so pure one CPU tick uh, output, we can use the send event assembly instruction. So this as well uh, differentiates because such function will delay the context switch by at least five to six clock cycles. This is a one clock cycle instruction. And when we run uh, the microcontroller with a 4 MHz SysTick, we can see the time when one uh, task was finished and the other was entered. So by implementing this, we can measure the time and uh, we can see that the beginning of the SysTick and the beginning of the user task code took 65 microseconds. Now, if you take 65 microseconds and we multiply by the system clock, running at 4 megahertz, we can assume how long the task switch is. It's four times 65 microseconds. Four cycles per microsecond multiplied by 65 microseconds. And we can as well see a beginning of pent SV and the user task code. So this is where we uh, do the yield, for example, and uh, change or uh, generate the task switch uh, as quickly as possible, avoiding the cystic. So in this case, the task switch took 37 microseconds. So this is the time generating context switch by a time uh, by a cystic. This is a context switch by OS yield. So you see there is a difference, which is the source of the context switch. And uh, if we use uh, the combined method beginning of cystic and uh, jump to the pen SV 30 microseconds. That's time that's spent in the cystic interrupt. And we can as well see jump to the user task within pen SV and user task code. So in this case, five microseconds. Now looking at uh, the possibility of uh, generating uh, pulses with an instruction, the S EV send event generates just one clock worth of output. But the advantage of such instruction is no other time spent. So now let's speak about the stack pointers. The Cortex M architecture offers two stack pointers that are banked. Both of them are present as the register R13 and the uh, the switch between them proceeds automatically. If you run in a dual stack model, that's uh, a initial setup of uh, the free artos, uh, the main stack pointer is used uh, when uh, you are in an interrupt or exception model. The process stack pointer, however, is used uh, whenever you run a standard application code. So if you are out of all interrupts, the advantage is that it allows separation 
of the core of the RTOS, which is pointed by the main stack pointer, from different tasks which are pointed by a process stack pointer. So the stacks are independent and uh, uh, it minimizes the risk of overwriting the main uh, stack for the core of the operating system. The dual stack model has to be switched on and uh, it is the option for the free RTOS. Normally, when you boot the STM32, it starts with a single stack model. So only the MSP is used both for the standard application and the interrupts. But by turning on the dual stack, then uh, the two stacks will appear. Now let's jump to the API of creating of the tasks. So we can see how the task can be defined and then how it can be created. Uh, the task is defined by a macro OS thread dev. Here we uh, put the name of the handler, uh, the function that will be called when the task is instantiated, the priority, number of instances which is ignored right now, and the number of the uh, stack size currently in bytes. So the CMSYS API differs from the native API by definition of the stack size in bytes. Uh, I'd like to point out that this is a macro that creates a structure as a local variable with this name. So it adds some uh, prefix and suffix and it uses the task one as the uh, principal name of this structure. Further, uh, when uh, you want to create the task and uh, instantiate it in the heap and uh, put it into the scheduler, you call a function OS thread create. Now you can see that the task one is wrapped by a macro OS thread, which takes the task one, adds the prefix and the pointer. So effectively it passes the pointer to the local variable created in the OS thread dev. And the second parameter is the initialization value passed to the task when you create it. Uh, the creation of the task will return a thread ID and uh, you can store it in a handle that can be used when calling a thread related functions. So if you want to get the state of the thread, if you want to suspend the thread, uh, you need the handle to the thread, to the task. And uh, that's exactly what you get when you call the OS thread create. We can, uh, or we should check uh, the return value because if it is not null, the thread creation was successful. But if it is null, there was an error. Typically, it would mean that there is not enough memory in the heap to allocate the TCB and stack. So in such case, uh, if you didn't implement the hook functionality, uh, you know that uh, there is a serious error and you can't use this thread. You can still operate your application, but this task wasn't created. Now, uh, the task one handle uh, has got the type of OS thread ID. It is created uh, with this function, with the definition of the thread created by the macro and an argument. You can as well terminate the thread by calling this function with a thread ID. You can as well pass uh, null to delete uh, a current thread. So if you want to uh, terminate yourself, you pass a null or zero and uh, that will find the appropriate value automatically and terminate the current process. You can get the task ID by calling the thread get ID function. So if you need it for other purposes, you can as well obtain it. How to control the behavior of the task? Uh, when uh, you are within a task, uh, you can yield. This means uh, the thread at the current uh, moment will be interrupted and it will cause a task switch. So if another task is waiting, the yield will cause the other task to run. 
It's a very effective method of uh, not wasting the CPU time if my job is finished. So I don't spend time uh, drinking coffee. I give the microphone to my colleague immediately. That's yielding. You can test if a thread was suspended by calling a thread is suspended with its uh, ID and it will return whether the thread was put into the suspend state or whether it's uh, in other blocked ready running. Uh, you can resume a suspended task. You can check the state of the task so you can uh, detect whether the task is ready, blocked, suspended. Uh, you can as well resume and suspend all tasks. This is very useful when uh, you want to stop the execution of everything and you, for example, wait for an interrupt to resume. So if you want a lower power mode, you can stop everything and, uh, for example, on a button press that will resume all tasks, you again return to the functionality. 